All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Foggy Transformations. Pleasure to be here. Um, you know, I'm happy to be back, man, honestly. And, you know, I just wanted to touch on something to power you up. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and the main thing that I want to let you know is, you know, it when it comes to the mind, I want you to see it from a place of high level balance. And what I mean by that is you got the external world. You can only control the external world so much. You got the internal world. Those are your, that's you going into your mind. Those are your dreams, your ideas, you know, the dialogue you have with yourself that we can't hear, you know, and I think it's all about being able to have a separation between both. And that's where you can find you, right? Because there are so many people who are attached to that voice in their head and their inner world is chaotic because that voice is always talking, you know, it's worries, concerns, it's always this, then it's that, then it's this, that, that, and it becomes this mess. Then in the external world, it's always this battle of having to like, you know, you got to survive, you got to play the game, you got the rat race going on, you got the uh, having to accomplish this, just having to pay your bills, you know what I mean? And that can become chaotic very easily, you know what I mean? And then next thing you know, you know, you don't even know that there is a version of you that is the observer of both. You're just in it. You're just, all right, everything going on in my head. Now I got to do this in the outer world. Then I'm home and I got this stuff. And then, and now you're a slave to your own experience of life. So a secret you got to understand is it first begins with the yin, which is the in, the internal. You have to understand that the voice in your head and the thoughts in your mind, you want to be the observer of the thoughts in your mind. You want to be the observer of that internal dialogue and don't take that internal dialogue. I'm sorry, that internal dialogue on as if it is your, as if it is you, you don't want to identify with that voice. You want to observe that voice because that voice is not you. A lot of the time that voice is the voice of your grandmother, your mother, your friend, you know, uh, the TV, the movie you watched. Like there are so many influences that have shaped us and molded us. And it is not, uh, you know, the minute we identify with that voice, you're also identifying with the fears and the doubts of, you know, the ones before you. So how do you change this pattern? How do you break the generational curses, the generational cycles? You have to have new dialogue, new voices that are empowering you. But how do you get to these new voices that are empowering you if you're identifying with the voices of weakness? You cannot gain something unless you let go. You have to create the space to gain something new in your life. So these old voices of doubt, of criticism, you know, and in a lot of in, in a lot of cases, these are voices of defeat. Like there are people who never got to succeed in the things they wanted in life. And that old voice is a loser voice. And it's like, how are you going to manifest something new with the old mentality, with the old voice, with the old concerns? So before you can change or transform anything in your life, you got to first know, like, wait, I'm not this voice. I'm not these words. I can manifest whatever I want in my life, but because I can separate from the old voice. So that's number one. You must be able to view your thoughts and ideas a way that I always love to think about it is you're like a yogi sitting atop, um, you know, sitting at the top of this hill. And all of the chaos and all the voices and all the concerns and doubts are all down here. And you're and you're just sitting above it and you're able to look down on it, but you're not down there with it, with all of it. You're not down there. You're above looking down on it. So there is a separation. And that's what we're aiming for. So that's number one. You have to separate yourself from that internal dialogue, that voice, and you just watch it. You don't got to change it. You don't got to fight it, right? Because if you resist it, it grows. You just listen to it. Like, that's what meditation is. Like, you just sit there. And what a lot of people say about meditation is when you first meditate, you just hear a bunch of crazy voices and, like, crazy images. And all it is is just 
the chaos going all over the place. And it's a it's kind of wild, but it's a beautiful moment because you get to see the true chaos of the mind. And where people mess up is they try to fight it or they feel bad about it. No, nah, just let it flow. Like, don't identify with it. It's just my mind's just doing some wild stuff because that's what the mind does. The mind is ever changing. It has to be in chaos in order to be malleable and adaptable. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. Now, once you've created separation from the inner voice, you also got to create separation from the external pressures of life. Because what I've realized is there's never really an end game from this, from this rat race. Like, you know, everyone's looking for this happily ever after. Oh, I made the millions of dollars. Now I can retire early. Yeah, people do it, you know, and it's possible. But if you're waiting for that day and you're just busting your ass every day until that moment comes, um, let me tell you, man, you, you might be 60, 70, 80, 80 years old, constantly fighting and fighting and still not getting there because you're a slave to your desire, your external desires. You know, obviously you got to fight to get what you want. You got to be motivated. You got to have that ambition to make it happen. So I'm not telling you to not do that. But what I am saying is you got to balance it because in moments where the pressure becomes too much or things fall through or there's things you can't control, what you're going to do, be disempowered, right? Like that don't take away from the greatness of who you are. Doesn't take away from the masterful mind and creative mind that you have, you know, capitalism and the economy, these things, there's so many factors that affect it beyond you. You know, I've, I've run companies. I've done that from my early years. You know, I started my first company at 23 years old, my first real one. And what I've learned is, man, you know, that, you know, there's things that affect the economy, you know, even just like uh, interest rates, home, you know, things like that, housing, the housing market, you know, that make it tough. And what are you going to do? Are you going to doubt yourself? You're going to you know, be miserable because something didn't fall through. That's the easy way for you to be disempowered in life. So you have to build the muscle so that, you know, look, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. But when those moments happen and your hands are tied and you can only do so much, you got to be like, all right, look, I'm letting this, one. there's nothing I can do. My hands is clean. I'm about to relax, have a good time with my, with my, you know, my friends or with your partner or whoever. And I'm about to vibe out and just really um, enjoy the positives of what I've done. And where, where I've gotten to. And this is how you have a really good balanced life because at the end of the day, look, man, we all want to achieve amazing things, but you got to really embrace the simple things, man. And I'll close it out with this. You know, I, I watched a movie uh, like two days ago um, and it was basically about a tsunami that happened. And, you know, this family just went through hell. You know, they went on a vacation. Um, you know, some of y'all might have seen the movie. And it was this this couple or this family went on a vacation and then a tsunami hit. It was in Thailand or something like that. And the tsunami was, that movie was a mess. I mean, Lord, that family went through hell and back. It was awful. And then I don't want to give nothing away in case you see it, but it really put in perspective that, yo, if you got family, you know, if you got your loved one with you, if you're relatively healthy and, and your family's relatively healthy and you could call them and you could touch them, and you could hug them, you got way more than millions of dollars. Because when I watched that movie, that man and that woman and that family would have given everything. They would have given 10 million. They would have done given them their whatever just to be able to hug their son and their wife, you know, one time. And, and the fact that you can do that is so amazing. But guess what? You'll never be able to embrace that chasing these external things. You know, you can have everything. You can have a, a beautiful car, a beautiful home, great family, um, a great career. And just because you're not able, you know, you messed up on one thing at work or something isn't working your way. Next thing you know, you're miserable. And if you live a life like that, you're always one little thing away from being miserable. Right. You can have it all. But that one thing you don't have just makes it all feel like nothing. Don't be that person. You want to be the balance in between. I'm observing my inner world and I'm seeing, okay, this is what's going on. If I want to affect it, I can change my thoughts, learn new things and alter that. But I can only alter it because I'm observing it and I'm separate from it. And I'm like, okay, I see my mind's doing this. Let me do this, right? This is how you become the creator, the artist of your world. 
This is how you become the creator. Externally, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but it's not working. It's I'm, I'm between a rock and a hard place. So I got to pivot. I got to do something else. Boom. Right. And but guess what? I'm not those things either. Right. I'm just, you know, this is what I'm doing, but I'm not. My identity isn't tied behind this. You know, this is something that I do. It's not doing me. You know what I mean? Pause. But like it that's really what I mean. Like at the end of the day, you know, you're the one that controls your career. You're the one that makes things happen. You're not a slave to your career. That's the problem. Some people are a slave to their career when really you should be the creator. You're the at the cost point, not the effect of your life. So when you understand that, nobody can pull your power away from you because if things crash, look, at the end of the day, I'm still me. I'm still not going to let this bring down my self-respect. You know what I mean? Like, don't let nothing build down your self-respect because if you got the right mentality and if you have respect for yourself and you believe in yourself, you'll always find a way to make something new happen. But when you lose that respect for yourself and that confidence, I mean, you can't do nothing now, right? Now you're just going down a, um, a free fall. So that's my message for y'all, man. Um, and I just wanted to share that. Uh, I got more videos on the way. Make sure to visit 5dtransformations.com. Make sure to join the free 5D community. It's called 5D University. Um, make sure to check out the Pyramidian membership right now. Uh, it's very powerful. I got videos on there now. And then finally, please make sure to check out the 5D um, base course. It's a dating and relationship course game changer for men and for women. And we also have Untethered, the uh, Narcissist course on how to break free from narcissists. So that's out right now. Go to 5dtransformations.com. I will see you all in the next video. Please like and subscribe because my channel, we need to rev it up. You know, we, we, we need to definitely turn it up so I can start doing some live streams and really start taking things to the next level. So make sure to like and subscribe. If you are on any of the other platforms, just make sure to like um, and, and share it with somebody. I'll see y'all later. Peace.